Welcome to Construct Tech TV. And on today's tech update, I will address the IT sector outlook, coalitions for zero energy buildings, the transformation of modular buildings, printers of the future, and what's needed to rebuild the grid. First, what is a better way to start the show than with an outlook of the future of the IT sector? And I have some really good news for you. The tech sector is going to see some positive growth next year. Now, Gartner says global IT spending will actually grow 4.3% between 2017 and 2018. Enterprise software and IT services will see the strongest growth overall. Meanwhile, communication services will also continue to drive the majority of all this spending. Also, the devices segment will see some growth for the first time in two years, if you can believe that. Some big trends to keep an eye on include the cloud, technologies that enhance the digital workplace, and analytics. Tech purchasing is certainly on the rise in the year ahead. Now the question you need to be thinking about is, how are you planning to spend all your money in 2018? Another big trend to keep an eye on in 2018 is the growth of net zero energy. It is something we have been hearing a lot about here at Constructec, and this will certainly continue. A new group of organizations are forming a coalition to advance adoption of zero energy building standards in the state of Oregon. The group is targeting both commercial and residential structures, and this coincides with the state's overall focus on accelerating energy efficiency. In November, the governor signed a new executive order which says by 2024, state energy codes will require energy performance that is equivalent to the U.S. Department of Energy's Zero Energy Ready Standards. The new Oregon Zero Energy Buildings Coalition will help meet this goal. It will provide technical and research support to state, local, and school officials. It will also support the implementation of standards established in the governor's executive order. This trend will easily come to your state next. Are you ready to build net zero energy? Another big trend that we've talked a lot about on this show is modular construction. Well, this isn't slowing down anytime soon. And we're seeing multiple new examples of modular building in both the commercial and residential side. On the commercial side, a company in China is creating modular energy storage power plants. This consists of prefabricated foundation modules and prefabricated standard containers. Now, the benefit here is a shorter construction cycle. On the residential side, we have seen modular pickup at a rapid pace. Casita, for example, offers high-tech prefabricated modular homes that come fully equipped with appliances, furniture, and even integrated home automation systems. Pretty cool, right? But these are only a few examples. Now, two companies in Italy are collaborating on modular stadiums. Now, that's right, modular stadiums. Rubner Hosbau and Bear Stadiums are partnering to develop new green stadiums that offer customers these turnkey formulas. Now, these modular projects start from a minimum of about 1,500 seats. And this includes these mini wind turbines, solar panels, low consumption uh, light towers, and either of other kind of energy efficient features. Now, my guess is we're going to hear so much more about modular in the year ahead. Look for them. I bet you'll see a lot of them. Your job site is getting connected, but is your office? Hardware for the office continues to advance. Case in point, printers. One example is the HP DesignJet T830 24-inch multifunction printer. It is designed specifically for the construction industry. It enables teams to collaborate by printing, copying, scanning, sharing plans, schedules, and drawings with a single device. Construction professionals can also wirelessly print project sets and documents and scan images with an app. As such, the industry talks about going paperless. I still think there's going to be some paper, but technology such as this is helping to bring the best of both worlds together. As we talk about, there's a printer on the job site. On our previous show, 
I discuss new research at Purdue University that is going to change how we build the smart grid. But I wanted to dive into some other news here on this segment of the show today. The U.S. Department of Energy has awarded Michigan State University a grant for a new project focusing on rare isotope beams. The new facility will support the university's energy-intensive research by building a new transmission substation. To help support this, the ITC has spent $6.5 billion to build a new transmission lines and substations or reconstruct old power infrastructure across its seven-state footprint. This will improve system reliability and interconnections of new energy sources. In my opinion, all of this research is good news for the future of rebuilding the grid. Now that's your tech update for today.